for the brilliant speech that you've just made. And thank you to everyone for that impeccable minute of silence that we just held. That minute of silence was in mourning for all those that have died. Young people who died in the Negev desert, young people who have been killed by Israeli forces in Gaza at the moment, people that are dying because of the war that is going on in the area. And those killings are wrong, murder is wrong, the loss of human life is wrong. What we're searching for here today is a process for peace and a process for justice and a process for honour, particularly for the people of Palestine. And it is right to condemn the killings that have happened. It is right to condemn the targeting of civilians, which is, of course, a war crime within international law. But it's also right to condemn the continuing occupation of Palestine by the Israeli military forces. The occupation of the West Bank and the settlements, which now number over 500,000 inhabitants, the system that has been quite correctly described by the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu as a system of apartheid, has to be condemned and has to be opposed. And the world must recognise that for all the horrors of what happened last weekend to demand that the entire population of Gaza move and that a million people leave their homes within 24 hours is dangerous, it is going to kill people and they are dying in their thousands at the present time. And so our demand, our demand is to end the occupation is to end the bombardment of Gaza and to recognize that to deny innocent civilian people water, electricity, the basic necessities of life such as sewage and hygiene is also a war crime and also illegal within the terms of the Geneva Convention. I've had so many messages from people over the last few days. People in Israel who oppose the occupation, people in Israel demanding human rights. I've had messages from people in Gaza under bombardment. I've had messages from people who've lost loved ones and continue to search for others that they haven't yet been able to find. The devastation of life and the devastation of hope that goes with it is why millions of people all over the world were demonstrating yesterday, today, tomorrow, and we will carry on demonstrating as long as it takes. As long as it takes to bring about peace, to bring about recognition of the rights of Palestinian people that have been denied for so long. And an end to the arms sales that provide the wherewithal for the killing to take place in the first beginning. And so today it is a day of solidarity and a day of hope. Solidarity because we're here, solidarity that people in Paris and Cape Town, in the United States, in Australia, all around the world are demonstrating their love and support for the Palestinian people. And so we stand four square with them today. And there are many who say that nobody should be here today because they'll be condoning terrible things. 
None of us are here to condone killing. None of us are here to condone occupation. None of us are here to allow this assault on the people of Gaza and the people of the West Bank to go on. And I conclude with one last thought. Over 70 years ago, the Nakba took place. Over 70 years ago, hundreds of thousands, 700,000 people were removed from their homes. Many made their homes in Gaza and are now, three, seven decades later, being told to move on to somewhere else. But there are also hundreds of thousands of people in refugee camps in Lebanon, in Jordan, in so many other countries all over the Middle East. People whose grandparents and great-grandparents were forced out of their homes have a life in refugee camps. Refugee camps are home to millions around the world. They're a place of desperation because it's the only place you can go. But they're also a place of determination and hope for the future. So today, as we wave the Palestinian flag, let's hear it for the people of the West Bank, for the people of Gaza, for the people of the refugee camps, and say very bluntly to our political leaders in this country, do not condone war crimes, do not condone the starvation and the denial of medicine to desperate people in Gaza or anywhere else. If you believe in international law, you believe in human rights, then you must condemn what is happening now in Gaza by the Israeli army. Thank you very much.